Okay, let's go on to number four, which is, can you guess it? Who? It's so easy to remember. Who? Now, this week I started texting one of my authors asking for a book recommendation. And uh, he re responded with two ideas, but then he said, who is this? I've lost all my numbers, uh, and I'm just wondering who I'm talking to. When you're reading, uh, when you're reading a book, you probably want to know who is talking. This information uh, could be presented in a, on a bio at the back of the cover. It could be an introduction that someone gives when they introduce you to give your presentation. Um, so it may not be in the introduction itself. But oftentimes, it's a good idea to put some hints of who you are in your introduction. Because remember what I said, an introduction is about building a relationship with your reader. And they're deciding whether they want to continue that relationship or not. So at least let them know who they're relating with. Of course, the relationship is mostly about your book, especially in nonfiction. If, if they're interested in your topic and they know why it's going to be relevant to them, the who is not quite as important, which is why I've said it's number four. Probably you should talk about these two first. But still, sometimes the who can be very relevant to making them want to continue reading. Perhaps there are relevant details about why they should trust you and listen to you on this subject. So if you were saying, most days I wake up and I wish I was a boy, and you are a male, I don't think that they would listen to you on that subject. <laughs> Maybe the it's obvious enough from just your name that you know they should listen to you on this on this matter because you have an insight into gender bias as a woman. It could be something more uh, credentials. For example, do you have education in this topic? Do you have experience in this topic, whether professional or personal? Um, now, I gave you some of my education and experience when I gave my own introduction. I told you about where I studied, I told you about my current job, and I told you that I've done this many times coaching authors. Maybe I was a bit extreme in listing all those different things, and sometimes if, you, if people feel like you're reciting your CV, they also think, wow, this person is trying to prove themselves. So it could be I had, had done that. Um, but sometimes that can help build trust with your reader. Oh, this person knows what they're talking about. Subject, and he also went to Harvard, and he also um, has lived in this country for 30 some years, even though he's a foreigner. That can build trust with the reader when they know, oh wow, this person knows what they're talking about. Personal experience as well as studies. That's especially important in nonfiction. Um, so, so education and experience, whether professional or personal. But another thing which might be more relevant to you in other fields would be your personality. Part of the who might be your personality. And that might not have to be something that you state very obviously, but it could be something that you demonstrate. Maybe, for example, someone said they're reading Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. Well, we all want to read that because of who he is already, because he is very well known as a comedian. But if you didn't know him, at least when you start reading the first few pages of that book, his personality is so funny that you would just want to keep reading. And so who he is shines through even the way he writes. Another thing could be maybe you have a personal connection to the reader. So for example, to the, the author has a personal connection to the reader. So for example, um, the novel I talked about by Sisi Jangaremba, she writes a story about a little girl. And the author herself is a woman. And it's about a girl's struggle for education. And now, as a woman, I related to this little girl, thinking about how she struggled with that. So it could just be that your, your audience relates to your character or yourself. Um, and you just put in some mentions. Maybe 
in your book, you give a story about, oh, you know, my child did this funny thing, and then they told me this and that. If you're writing a book on parenting, it's important for them to know that you're a parent. So you, you somehow include it. Um, those would be in more like personal types of writing. But if it's not a personal kind of a writing, maybe it's a newspaper, maybe it's a, a textbook, and you really yourself, you're not supposed to be relevant to, to the, the subject, you're supposed to be very factual and attached, then you can still apply this to your, your bio on the back cover or on the bottom of the article. Put in the details that are relevant to your subject matter and that will make your reader trust you, whether it's your education, experience, or your personality. 